Hi, everybody. I'm glad you're here. And thank you to Pawson Library for having us, too. I'm going to make a Southwest Bowl. And a lot of times when I make things, I like to make them simple. You can make them more complicated, add more uh, layers of flavor. Um, if you want, I, I just think if you have a really good sauce, you can take simple ingredients and really boost the flavor. So that's what I'm doing tonight with uh, chipotle dressing and then later a green goddess dressing. So uh, what I'm doing right now, I want you to, I don't have specific measurements for these things, like a lot of salads you see online, just get an idea. Like I'm just, I'm using baby kale, whatever greens you like the most, use those. So I'm putting some baby kale down and then I have some frozen corn. I've talked, I just made sure again with um, Trader Joe's, anything that they sell there is non-GMO because uh, corn is one of those non-GMO, that's one of the um, crops that's most heavily uh, or most frequently uh, a GMO product and it's genetically modified. So it's good to avoid that. So I'm just laying these different uh, foods on here. I usually do like a quarter cup or half a cup of the quinoa and the beans. I'm using tricolor quinoa. I started this recipe when my son was in high school and decided he wanted to be a vegan, but he hated beans. So I thought tricolor quinoa, I can hide the black beans a little bit better. Not completely, but uh, it worked. And that's how I do that. And then I've got some tomatoes. These were kind of big grape tomatoes and I didn't, you know, it's important, like if, if you've got kids, you don't want them to choke on it. So I sliced it lengthwise and in turn half horizontally. Then I'm putting some green onion, red onion on here. And you can put whatever things you want. You could put, um, you know, maybe some jalapeno or some other pepper, bell peppers. Oops. I've got some avocado. So that goes together really quickly. I mean, I will put a little bit of lime juice on and a little bit of um, coconut aminos. Maybe I want to just put a little bit of uh, garlic powder on here too. Salt and pepper, but I like the coconut aminos. They give it, uh, the coconut aminos, or if you want to use a soy sauce or tamari, that's fine too, or Bragg's. This is lower in sodium. That's why I like it. It's, um, and then the avocado, this gives, is a real umami flavor. And I always feel more energy, energy after I have this. These foods just give me energy. So I like that. So on top of that, I'm going to make the dressing now. I made, um, I gave you the recipe for the cashew dressing, but I didn't want to take the time to make it and use up the time in the class. So I'm just putting a cup and a half. You can use, if you want to buy a mayonnaise or sour cream or use a different uh, recipe, that is fine. I'm just looking for a cup and a half. And then to that, I'm adding the chipotles. They're about one per tablespoon. They also have, so I got them out of the can like that. Now to have a no oil version, I use the Frontera. It's more expensive, but there's no oil. So I'm gonna put two dates, which I've cleaned and pitted. I always wanna look at the pit, the pits, <laughs> the pits, the uh, dates, because they can have, you know, occasionally you'll see one that's black inside. It's a mold, it's not dangerous, but it's not pleasant to eat or little insects. So I like to always make sure that I clean and take the stems out, the pits out, and then make sure they're good inside. And I go my chipotles. You can add more later, but you can't take it out. So just you know, want to taste it after you blend it and see if it needs to be hotter. Or if you have a little bit, a little too strong, you could add a little bit more of the uh, sour cream or mayo. Okay, and I'm just gonna... Okay, 
have a nice pink hue, if you can see that. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this on top. Now, because I'm using this dressing, which has got some heat in it, it's got a lot of flavor. I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I don't use a lot of other stuff, but if, I, if I'm not going to use the dressing, I might put some chipotle and cumin or other powders like that. Just do it. Make it your own. It's all good stuff. Lots of colors. We eat with our eyes first. So having something really colorful is visually appealing and it kind of gets us in the mood for this yummy, really healthy food. To garnish it. I do put cilantro on. I know some people don't like that. I didn't like it at first either, but some I, I don't have the thing where I'm genetically you know, predisposed to disliking it, but I, I didn't care for it right away. So sometimes you can give yourself a chance to see if you will develop a taste for it. A little bit of this for a garnish. And a little bit more onion on top. Okay, so back to you, Jody, or off to you, Jody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. That was absolutely delicious. And I'm so excited to learn that Frontera has an oil free Chipotle. I didn't know that. So that's awesome. Uh, and I can't wait to try that creamy sauce. That looks really good. I, what I wanted to share with you all this evening is a fun barbecue recipe for the grill. Uh, if you don't have a grill, of course, we, uh, we can always use the broiler or even the Breville air fryers that are the big ones, you know, like the Ninja Foodies. So you can also do um, your kebabs in there. So I would like to start off with making the uh, Hawaiian barbecue sauce, which is a neat combination of flavors. It's a little bit island inspired, a little bit Asian fusion, um, and a little bit spicy and smoky. So I think you're really going to like it. What I've done um, so far is I've just taken a little six ounce can of tomato paste and, and put it in my mini blender. And I'm going to add one cup of pineapple juice. And when I was making this recipe, I realized I started with a can first because I didn't want you to have to buy a whole big jar of pineapple juice if you didn't want to. Uh, so one cup of pineapple juice is exactly what you would normally get in a can of pineapple. So that would work out great as well. And um, then we're going to add in some grated ginger and a couple of garlic cloves. On the recipe I wrote, I put two to three, just because if your garlic cloves are real tiny, you might want another one to get the flavor in there. And about, um, uh, about a teaspoon of grated ginger. Now, I confess I was a little heavy handed with that because I love the ginger flavor. And we're going to do two teaspoons of toasted sesame seeds. This adds uh, wonderful calcium and protein. A lot of times we think sesame seeds are just for pretty, but they're actually awesome nutrition as well. And we're gonna do a tablespoon of rice vinegar. Any good barbecue sauce is gonna have a little bit of acid in there to help give it that tang. And we're gonna do a tablespoon of Coconut aminos. I'm using the teriyaki coconut aminos because that lends itself perfectly to the flavor profile that I want. Um, if you were to use regular, you might want to add in a little more ginger and garlic to compensate for that. You can also use uh, soy sauce, tamari sauce, anything like that. But like Michelle said, the coconut aminos are so much lower in sodium that they make, they make a really nice choice when you want to add that umami. And then this part is totally optional, but I like a little zing and a little spice. So I'm going to add just a little bit of um, sriracha, just a half a teaspoon. The well, if you're if you're really sensitive to spice, uh, I'd recommend the well your world sriracha just because it's it's mild. It's not too crazy fire at all, and it is um, it's also sodium free. So that really is a nice little health benefit as well. But yeah, even if you've never been able to have sriracha before, that's a good one to try. And then lastly, just a little bit of liquid smoke. Uh, 
this is what I'm doing, uh, especially tonight, because I won't, I can't pop outside and grill while we're live together. So to add my little grill flavor, I'm just gonna use a little bit of the pure all natural. The only ingredient in here is the smoked water. There's um, nothing else added. And that's gonna give us a nice barbecue flavor, even if we don't have a barbecue at home. And then all we're gonna do is just take a second to blend these guys together to make it nice and smooth. I'll apologize in advance for the little bit of noise. And that's it, homemade barbecue sauce. Like what was that, three, four minutes tops? Even with all my talking. And uh, this is so, so tasty. Now what I'm doing, uh, what I did a couple of hours ago, and I went ahead and started marinating my tofu. That part is optional, you can always just baste it on. But I thought it would be fun to try to let the flavors marry in there a little bit. So I added um, maybe half a cup to a pound of tofu. And for the tofu kebabs, I'm using the super firm tofu. And I was like, just keep it up into nice uh, big chunks. Since we're grilling them, we can see it just uh, nice big chunks. Tossed them in about a half a cup of the barbecue sauce. The recipe makes about a cup and a half. So you have plenty to serve on the side, plenty to season and baste your veggies with. And um, it just adds a really fine uh, island inspired uh, flavor to your kebabs. Uh, now, for assembling the kebabs, I've got, uh, I was inspired by Michelle's rainbow of uh, beautiful colors. So I've got some pretty mini uh, peppers. I'm just going to leave these whole. I've got some nice fresh chunked pineapple. Uh, and for green, you can have your choice. I got a little bit of zucchini. I also have uh, some nice green bell pepper. And for a pop of color and anthocyanins, I've got some red onion and some mushrooms, which I always say, you know, that's make Dr. Furman happy and get my mushrooms in. When I'm assembling kebabs, I like to start and end with a mushroom. I feel like it makes cute little caps and it holds all the ingredients on well. So I'm just gonna start uh, with a mushroom going this way and then add in, start adding in all of my ingredients and my colors. I tried to do the, um, I love onions. So I do nice big, big chunks of onion like that. And maybe some green. You could also do summer yellow summer squash would be beautiful on here too. Some pineapple, maybe another tofu, maybe another onion. Oops. There we go. And a beautiful pepper. And then end with a mushroom. So then you can see it just makes this like perfect little picture perfect kebab. And this is so fun. This is um, what I call everybody food. So no matter who's at the barbecue, no matter how they eat, what food choices they make, every, this is delicious, wonderful, everybody food. And it just is a fun way to still get to participate in the barbecue and the grilling out and stay plant-based. Um, so yeah, this is a, a neat, neat way to do this. Now, if you wanted to add different veggies, of course you could. You can add your favorites, your favorite, um, almost anything really. But I thought the, when I think about Hawaiian and pineapple and sweet and sour, I always picture the peppers uh, that you would see um, in a lot of traditional Hawaiian style dishes. So that's why I went with these, the peppers and the onions. Let's do an orange pepper this time. And end with the mushroom going the other way. So really cute, so easy. Um, this is something that would be fun for the kiddos to do with you so they can make their own, you know, decide where their veggies want to go and get them involved in eating the veggies. And then, of course, that always inspires them to eat more. So that's a great thing as well. So I'm just going to build uh, four here real quick. And you could also toss the, uh, all of this in a little bit of the barbecue sauce as well. 
if you wanted, if you, especially if you were making them for a big crowd and you didn't want to have to base everything uh, individually, you could do these ahead of time and just have them sitting in the fridge until grill time, which is nice uh, to get everything prepped and ready to go. Just big red pepper. Let me show And the great thing about this um, barbecue sauce is it will last uh, for seven to 10 days in your fridge. And you certainly could, if you wanted to uh, always have this on hand, you could just freeze it as well. Uh, it, but it's so fast and easy to make up fresh. That's, that's the fun part about that is having your sauces just all ready to go. And you could um, tailor that, like I said, to meet your needs. If you like things a little spicy, you could uh, add um, a little more sriracha to it. You could add, uh, goodness, almost as much garlic as you love, anything that you enjoy. Uh, and of course, every brand of everything is a little bit different. So it's always a good idea to taste and adjust your seasoning. If there's, if there's one thing I can share with everybody tonight, I would say, you know, as you're making someone else's recipes, especially, take a moment um, when you get to a certain stage and stop and taste it and see if it's working well for your palate. And if it is great, go for it. But if you're like, oh, it's missing a little something, maybe you need a little bit more acid or maybe you need a little bit more sesame seed or ginger, uh, you know, just add a little bit at a time and then try again. And then you will really um, get it just the way that your taste buds will love it. Because, you know, we're all made with these different set of taste buds. So what tastes wonderful to me might be too spicy for you or what tastes, um, you know, bland to one person is going to be super flavorful to another. So I would say just play around with it until you get it just right. But um, I don't know if you can see, but the, the tomato paste just makes it an instant rich, thick sauce. It's really like the perfect consistency for uh, almost anything you would need. It would also make a great like, you know, Hawaiian pizza, Hawaiian grilled pizza. You could use that sauce for that. Um, that would be wonderful. And so what we would do at this point, like I said, you can just uh, base down some extra sauce and get them ready for your grill, or you could um, put them under your broiler. You can uh, put them just even in your oven. You wouldn't have to broil them necessarily. The broil would just give it that nice little char that a grill would have. Or even if you have one of those wonderful um, convection style or toasted oven style air fryers, uh, you could air fry them as well and have, they would just be done in a few minutes. And because everything is technically, you know, sort of cooked already, they're 10 minutes on the grill is all they would need uh, or however much you'd like them done. And then for serving these, there's a couple of different options. I'll probably pass it over to Michelle while I play everything up. But I just wanted to share that now how I would love, I would love this and how I'm going to do this is with some greens and some rice and, um, serve it that way. But then if you ever have leftover kebabs, one of the neat things you could do with them is turn them into um, pita pockets. You know, once you have, you're taking them off the skewers before you're putting everything in the refrigerator for the night, the next day you can just pop them in with some greens and a pita and add a little uh, extra barbecue sauce on top, maybe add some sliced tomatoes and you would have a wonderful pita pocket. Another fun idea would be to turn them into uh, like a sushi burrito. You could take a nori sheet and then like any leftover rice that you had, put that down, take your little bits of barbecue Hawaiian kebab, and then roll those up into just one big, huge sushi burrito. You don't have to slice it like sushi. You could just eat it just like that. So that would be another uh, neat way to do that. And uh, so with that, I will uh, pass it over to Michelle and I'll do some plating and show you how pretty it looks when it's done. All right, that looks wonderful, Jody. So I, um, she brought up the point with different options here. I also, with um, what I made before and what I'm making now, you can also make mason jar salads. You can, I could have done the one I did before as a Buddha bowl and had everything in little wedges, but uh, I like to make things like this ahead of time and layer the legumes, vegetables, and all that all the way up to the top. And I jam my greens at the very top. And uh, I use one of the, the mason jar lids because they're meant to keep the um, air out and they last a long time and it looks nice if you've got these beautiful jars with all these different colors and you open your refrigerator and you see this 
already made uh, salad is it's really easy to eat it and really be looking forward to it so I like that and next thing I'm making is a eat the rainbow salad with the green goddess dressing so if you've heard we're we really are recommended to get at least 30 different foods a week to help our microbiome have uh, more diversity there so I I think last time I, I, I think I wrote down to um, that I use red leaf lettuce, but this is a, a mix from Trader Joe's and it's got so many, you can just see there's so many different ingredients and they're all different herbs and lettuces, greens. And so that's a nice way with all the other stuff going on the salad to get you know, halfway through your weekly goal in one meal, which is kind of nice. I'm just gonna put that on, put as many as you like, at least a good couple handfuls per serving. And then I'd like to have people just kind of put in, I'm going to use all different foods, like the red, there are different uh, food groups or color groups, red, orange, yellow, green, the uh, blue, and the, the red. So I'm going to, I'm using tomatoes for my red, and that gives you the lycopene, which uh, decreases the risk of prostate cancer. You don't use whichever, my <laughs> Whichever ones that you like, that's the most important thing. But I'd like to know like what else you would like for red foods. If you could put those in the chat and tell me, because you could use different things if you guys can. With some ideas, like there's watermelon and red pepper. Cherry tomatoes, good. I use the grape tomatoes, not for my orange, which is the beta carotene. I'm using just shredded carrots. And for yellow, I have some uh, bell pepper. You can put, let's see what else we got, cherry tomatoes, beets, radishes, good, thank you. So what other things you can use? Fruits too, you could use strawberries, watermelon. You've got, see beets on there, grated or sliced or diced, whatever form you like them in. And then for my red, where did I put it? My, uh, I've got the blue, I've got the red onion. Got the anthocyanins. They're all good. So if you just get all the colors, you're going to get all these incredible phytonutrients and a lot of, you know, we've got fiber and vitamins and minerals, all sorts of good stuff that helps us be healthy. For the green, I've got Persian cucumbers. One thing about these, I mean, I really do love these, and I get organics. I don't worry about peeling anything. But they tend to get really slimy really fast. If you've noticed, you buy the little tray and you think, what happened? I just bought those. So they're really like a lot of packaging. You want to get it out of the package that you buy it in the store. You kind of think, oh, it's they packaged it this way. It should help, but not really. So and then like a lot of things, you don't want the cucumbers. So you take them out of the package, get rid of the package, and then um, you don't want them to be trapped like this. You can put a paper towel or a dish towel on them and then put them in a warmer part. They don't want to be really cold. So maybe the door or the bottom, you don't want to put them where it's super cold. So that's just my little tip for that. And then I've got avocado. I'm going to get my, I've got quinoa. Again, I've got a different quinoa this time. And I'm using garbanzo beans. So I usually use at least a quarter to a half a cup, depending on who's eating it. I'm just going to lay this in here. My garbanzo beans. So there's a lot of fiber. These are actually if you're on the PCRM. If you've seen that handout, they consider these like the grains and things brown on the rainbow. They got a lot of fiber and protein and all sorts of good things too. And they're filling. And I've got my avocado. And then I'm going to put that right in the middle. You can see how that's looking so far, all the different colors. And now I'm gonna make the dressing. It's a green goddess dressing. It's not your traditional one. It's just got a lot of herbs and um, a little water in. I think I really love it. I love the smell of basil. It's, it's got a lot of benefits. Everything going into our foods have really good benefits. I've got, um, it says chives, but not everybody can find them or wants to spend the money on them. So this uh, substitute for chives is the just the green part of the green onion. So that's what I'm using. 
then I can use the white for something else. I'd like to reduce food waste. And I've got a quarter cup packed of uh, parsley. I like the uh, Italian flat leaf myself, but you do what you like the most. And then my basil, I love that smell. It's so good. I do tend to get uh, organic when I can. I'd rather have you eat it conventional than not have it. But I do like, especially like if a, a dried herb because it's concentrated. So if it is a conventional uh, crop and it's dried, it's, it's like three times as strong in the dried form. So you're getting three times as many uh, chemicals or pesticides in there. So I do like to choose um, organic when possible. I got a little salt in here, garlic, lemon juice. And again, I've got the um, coconut aminos again. It's a really nice flavor. And, and to add to what Jody was saying before, like a lot of times if something's missing, it's often that umami flavor especially when you're transitioning. So using those umami flavors can help make something a lot more satisfying. So do, like she said, uh, taste it as you go along and then um, understand that sometimes you just need to add a little umami flavor. So I think I have everything on here. Yes, I added the goat to pastures. Pastures. And I saw Timory answered it, but if you can't have tree nuts, you can use sunflower seeds. They're, they've got a lot of benefits to eating that way. Um, to, I mean, to using those because they are cheaper. And, you know, if you think about women who are peeling them, that they, uh, the cashews can uh, give burns. So you might think of it as um, maybe more ethical in some cases. Okay, so I've got everything in here. Salt in. I usually use less salt than is called for because I just don't. Kind of scrape down the sides. Bits of herbs are sticking to the side a little bit. Pour it into a glass so you can see how green. I love this color green. Okay. So with this and the other chipotle dressing, they're usually a little thicker the next day. So just to be aware of that. And I'm just going to pour this on the top. Did anybody come up with any other ideas? Okay. Coconut, oh, soy sauce. Um, soy sauce, just to answer your question, I saw that in the chat, is it made from soy and the coconut aminos are made from coconuts, just to get a little simple. Okay, and just let me show you how that looks. And there's a lot less sodium in the coconut aminos. All right, back to you, Jody. <laughs> I think that might happen once. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle. I just want to show you guys the, the plate. I think you can see it fairly well. But here you go. I've got some uh, brown basmati rice, a bunch of greens to make Dr. Elselston happy. So a little extra pineapple, a big bob. And then to add even more um, nutrition on there, I've added some cilantro, some more sesame seeds, and uh, some green, green onions or some scallions. And that way uh, you're maximizing your allium family, which is extra good for your blood and your body. And that is um, just funny, one neat way to prepare it. 
that would be kind of a showstopper, I think, at any barbecue. So I hope you enjoy that. Now for our dessert. We're going to do a pina colada pie. Now, what kind of inspired me to come up with this is thinking about fast and easy summer recipes. I was remembering um, going down to see my family during the summertime down south. They would always have just these super fast, quick and easy recipes that are for icebox pies that they would throw together to take to any uh, church functions, family gatherings, family reunions, anything going on. And I thought, well, both of plant-based people need that too, right? So uh, I decided to kind of take those uh, summer icebox pies and, and make the healthiest version I could think of. And this one, because we're doing the Hawaii barbecue tofu kebabs, I wanted something to keep that island thing going. And I, so what we're gonna do is make a no-bake crust, just a few ingredients. Uh, I'm starting, the only thing I have in my food processor right now is a cup of pitted medjool dates. So I just you know, took all the pits out, popped them right in there. And I'm going to do uh, an oat and nut crust. And you could certainly do all nuts. Um, that would be no trouble at all. You could do oh, 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 just oats if you wanted to, if, if that meets your health goals. Um, my health goals are kind of like in the middle. So I want the flavor of the nuts, but I want the lower fat and nutrition of the oats. So I'm gonna do a combination. Um, I've got three quarters of cups of oats. And this, um, these measurements, like I said, are very uh, flexible. You know, if you want more nuts and less oats, just swap those for what works for you. Any kind of nut works beautifully in a no-bake uh, plant-based crust. So you could do macadamia nuts, you could do walnuts. Um, I'm using pecans because I love the way that coconut and pecans taste together. So that's just my preference. I'm doing a half a cup of uh, chopped pecans. And then because I wanted to bring a little bit of flavor into the crust that, that is also in the pie, I uh, decided to add a little bit of toasted coconut in there too. So I'm just doing a quarter of a cup, just a little bit to add a little something uh, unusual to the crust, add a little more Hawaiian. And then I decided, well, how can I add pineapple flavor to the crust? I wasn't sure how to do that without making the crust too soggy. So I found these neat um, bare pineapple chips and one ingredient, pineapple, a non-GMO pineapple at that. So as clean as it gets, and they're crispy, they're crunchy, and they just add the perfect little something to the crust to add, bring that Hawaiian flavor all the way through. So I'm gonna put those in there. And then I'm sorry to say I have to make a little more noise. So I'm going to blend this up. And this does take a little, a little while because we're gonna process this too. If you've ever watched Chef AJ, you know he talks about the break point. So we, we wanna get this crust to a very specific uh, texture so that it holds together really well. So again, apologies for the, for the noise. I don't think it's ready, but I'm gonna check it just so to give you the little break. <laughs> we need to come up with fun ads, Olivia, for to play while we're forward doing our machines. 
Oh, no, actually, this is pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is what Chef AJ taught me. So when you pinch it together, it should help see how it holds almost like a bliss ball or, you know, one of the little fun bites that you can make. And it just breaks perfectly. There's no crumbs. It's holding together just right. So that's when we know it's ready. If yours were to break and start, then the crumbs were falling all over, that just means it's not ready yet. So you would give that a few more minutes and just keep going until you get this super like Play-Doh <laughs> uh, texture to your crust. And then what we're gonna do is just pop this out and start pressing it in our pot pan. It's always, I always uh, wonder why people struggle with their appliances when they're on camera. And now I know it's because it's because you're a little bit your um, machines are sideways or different different than what you would normally have them in your kitchen. Okay, so we're just gonna pour this in. It comes out pretty clean, so that's why we do the crust first, because then we can just use the filling without having to take time to wash anything out or uh, do it that way. If we did the filling first, well, then we'd have to do some dishes. And we wanna avoid that at all costs. It's summertime, we don't wanna spend our time on dishes. Okay. Clean that off the blade a little bit, and we're just going to press it real quick. Um, while I'm doing this, I want to show you some other fun ways that, you know, if you didn't want a whole big pie, you could also do this as a layered parfait into fun parfait glasses. That would be beautiful for some uh, summer Sunday brunch. Uh, everybody could have their own little parfait. Uh, if you wanted to, um, you could press, I'm going to show you this little. Timory, who's in the chat, came up with this brilliant idea. Uh, you could do like little baby mason jars for individual fillings and you could so you could just put a spoon and press down a little crust in the bottom then put your filling and then put some fun little uh, pineapple or a cherry on top for a little treat this would be this would be a great make ahead for kids too uh, to just have something in the fridge waiting for them to enjoy so that's another fun option there's a lot of different ways you could do this if you have a family gathering or a barbecue obviously a whole pie is just fine but with, uh, if you want something portable that guests can just grab off the dessert table and, and walk around with, or sometimes people are more tempted to, uh, to enjoy dessert when it's a little something, just a, just a little bite. So that the little jars would be adorable for that. So that's all we do is just press it um, in the bottom and up the sides and we're ready to make our filling. It doesn't get easier than that. And you could, like I said, do any combination of nuts. You could do more or less coconut. You could leave out the coconut, whatever works for you and your health goals and your taste buds. Okay, so for the pie filling, this is kind of a funny story. Initially, I was going to do this with uh, two containers of cream cheese, vegan cream cheese. I'm using the Kite Hill brand because my personal preference is to be oil free as much as possible. So that's my favorite. And I thought, well, well, I'll just do two tubs of cream cheese and that'll be wonderful. Well, then uh, my order arrived and one of my cream cheeses, even though they both had the, the best, the same best by on date, one of them wasn't good and I couldn't use it. And I really wanted to test the pie recipe that day. So I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do? And I uh, found myself looking through the fridge and thinking, oh, I don't know what to do. But then I saw some tofu. So I decided that it would become a cream cheese and tofu pie because one, great calcium source, great protein source, awesome health, but also super cost effective. Um, you know, this is $7, the tofu is $1.79. So if budget is a concern for you, which it is for a lot of people right now, uh, the tofu is a great add-in. Now, of course, if soy is something you can't do because of an allergy, go with the two things of cream cheese. They'll both work out just fine. Um, and in my case today, they have, I'm using, you can use any kind of tofu will work, pretty much anything. I wouldn't use the extra firm, you know, this or the super firm, not the, you know, the vacuum pack ones, I wouldn't use those, but anything that's water packed, it's gonna be fine. Uh, I started when I, that day that I tested this, I also had was silken and even that worked out okay. But it was a silken firm, and today the store only had silken soft. So I'm using, I'm adding in just a little bit of firm regular tofu to counterback, uh, counterbalance what my store did not have today. So that's just going to make a little bit extra filling, but that's all right. Deep dish pie, that's not a problem to me. 
So we're just gonna kind of try not to make too big of a blob here. I think that should help balance out that soft a little bit. That's my point. We'll see how it goes. Now, for sweetness, this is another thing too that's going to definitely depend on what works for you, what works for your family. I have been a whole food plant based for quite a few years now. So I'm neuroadapted and not need things quite so sweet. So I'm going to use a date powder to sweeten. And I'm just going to use a half of a cup. Um, with the pineapple and everything else going on, that's going to work for me. But that might, when you, like, that's where I remember I said, taste and adjust. Mm -hmm. If you taste that and you're like, oh, that, that's not going to fly with my family. They need it sweeter. Then just add another half a cup. Use up to a cup of date powder or um, whatever sweetener works for you. Uh, I, I like to keep it as whole food as I can. When I can, uh, coconut sugar would work. It might, it would be a little bit darker brown. The reason I like the date powder is, um, because it's not quite, and it's not going to change my color too much. So that's what works for me. Now to hold this together a little bit, I'm going to add in some ground white chia seed. And the white chia seed would be obviously better than the black chia seed because otherwise it's going to look like you have pepper in your pie. And you don't want pepper in your pie. So, um, oops, what did I? I took my table spoon away. Uh, and it has liquid aminos or coconut aminos in it. That's not quite right. So give me one second here. Um, I'm going to do three tablespoons of ground white chia seeds. I just use my coffee grinder, which I have dedicated for spices because I don't do coffee. So that works for me. Um, if that would work for you as well. Now, if you did not um, want to have to use the chia seeds, you could try like an arrowroot powder or a tapioca flour. Something like that would probably be okay as well. You just want a little bit of a binder, a little bit of a thickener, uh, because the tofu is going, I mean, sorry, the pineapple is going to be um, a little bit loosening. And then I have 10 ounces of uh, pineapple chunks. And so that's, let's see, about a cup and a half. And I'm also going to add in just a little bit of coconut, not much, maybe a scant, scant quarter of a cup, just a little something. I want to save most of it for garnish. I want it to be pretty, but I'll put a little bit in there for texture. And so that the, as it sits in the refrigerator, the flavors will just get all happy together and be delicious. Again, sorry for the noise. Blooper. I forgot my vanilla and olive. And again, this the other ingredient is optional, is a little bit of brown extract. Nature's Flavors is a great company for organic uh, natural extracts. So, but just vanilla would be just would, would be fine. If you happen to have a wonderful coconut extract that you like, that might be fine too. I've just decided to do uh, a pina, pina colada I hear has, I never had one, but they sound wonderful. Um, would have a, a little spike of rum in there. So that's where our rum extract comes in. Okay, take two. Scraping here. Oh, I have one coconut together. It smells so good. And that's that. Just a few minutes and we have a bite crust and a pie filling. 
Now, we're just going to pour this right in our eye. It's going to be a little bit soft right now because it does need to set up in the refrigerator, hence the ice, ice back pie idea. And Try not to make a crazy, crazy mess here. Oh my goodness. This smells so good. This smells like the tropics. Okay. Put the rest of it in there. Just smooth it out nice and evenly. And then the only thing left to do is make it pretty. Now I would show this uh, at this point until serving time, but you could certainly, if you wanted to just go ahead and get it um, decorated and put it in the fridge so you don't have to worry about it, you can absolutely do that. Uh, I wanted to share a neat little like environmentally friendly trick with you guys. Uh, a lot of people are so, um, it's a habit to grab the plastic wrap, it's a habit to grab that foil, it's a habit to grab those things. But sometimes we forget that we can just use a plate or a bowl to cover things. And when it comes to a pie, which rarely comes with a lid, I just wanted to share that most of your Dutch oven lids will fit your pie plates. So this is just my big, Dutch oven, you know, regular, uh, what are they, six quart or whatever pot, and it fits exactly well. So, perfect covering. No plastic required. So, I just wanted to share that fun little tip with you guys to check your pots and pans at any time you're going to use uh, or need something to cover something before you go reach for a ceramic wrap or before you go reach for that. Look in your, your pot and pan covers first and see if you just happen to fit. A lot of times they will. Uh, so, um, now, to make this uh, picture perfect, we're going to decorate with some uh, coconut. And you could do any direction or any design you want. You could do this just around the edges. You could do this in the center. I'm just going to do a combination of everything uh, to make it festive. I lightly toasted my coconut. You certainly don't have to, but I just like the, the little extra flavor. Um, I find that I just, I put it on a pan on the stove top. You could also do it in the oven for sure, but it's summer and it's hot. So I just find that I'm medium low or, you know, as low as you can, you can do it like medium low for uh, four minutes is the magic on my stove. It might take a little bit longer, but then just give it a shake every few minutes. So you rotate and get the, get it evenly toasty. And then uh, we'll just make a little, a few little pineapple to come out. Sorry for the clinging. And I've got a few little pieces of fresh pineapple left from my kebabs. Now you could certainly do a whole ring in the center and a cherry in the center. You could do uh, half rings going around and little half moons all the way around. I'm going to give it so that each person has like a perfect little chunk. So I'm just gonna alternate between some fresh pineapple chunks and a fresh cherry. Because if you see the pina coladas in the fancy glasses, they are always garnished with a pretty piece of fresh pineapple and cherry. So I thought I would do the same for our summer pie. And I just have some um, wonderful fresh cherries that we are so blessed to have in abundance here in Michigan. I'm just going to put them in between each little pineapple. Now, if all you had is frozen pineapple chunks and all you had is uh, frozen cherries, that totally works. You don't have to have pina colada pie only in the summer. There might be a day in February where you're desperately wishing for summer that you want a pina colada pie. So in that case, you could totally do that. Um, let's see, maybe a cherry in the center. And a little piece of pineapple in the center. I don't know. That looks pretty good. I'll let me try and lift that up for you guys to see. Does that look like a super fun 
uh, thing to take to a summer barbecue or a luau or whatever kind of fun Hawaiian adventure you want to have with your family on this staycation budget time of uh, time in our country right now. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. You just want to chill this for like four to six hours and then it will be uh, nice and firm to slice. Uh, it could, I did try freezing it, but the interesting thing was is that the pineapple flavor kind of disappeared. So I would recommend just keeping it in the fridge and uh, serve it that way. So I hope you guys enjoy and back to Michelle for our fun next dish. That looks delicious, Jody, and I do love the tip with the lid. I haven't owned cling wrap for ages. We didn't get along very well when I owned it because it always stick to itself, but I just use silicone lids and all different things. And I'm going to incorporate the uh, pot lids into my rotation now. The next thing I'm making, because speaking of the tropics, it is going to feel like we're in them. Pretty This week is going to get super hot again. So only one of our dishes needs the oven or stove. So that's good. Uh, this is a nice refreshing drink. It's an Earl Grey latte. So just to save some time, I would be, uh, I took two cups of vanilla milk. Now we're all in different places on this journey. I use unsweetened. If you're just starting out, you're probably gonna want the sweetened it's vanilla milk. And then I put a half cup of water, put it on the stove and just turned up to medium heat. And just until the bubbles start to form around the center because you don't wanna scorch the milk. Then I put four bags of Earl Grey. I, when I was in college, we used to think Earl Grey tea made us score better on our tests, so we drink it before those. It's got bergamot is something you might be hearing about. Uh, some cardiologists are recommending the supplements. They're really good for our heart. Uh, the only caution I would say with the black tea, which is also good for us, very rich in antioxidants, is that it can decrease iron absorption, so you don't want to have it right near uh, certain foods. So I'm just going to put that. I put the four bags of... Um, Earl Grey tea. This, I like this company because I don't want to get one that is flavored if I don't have to. I want the actual uh, bergamot. And it's a little fruit that's Italian. It's grown in Italy. And so I get this kind. There's another kind that I get that's decaffeinated that has organic bergamot oil. So I, I prefer those. So I let back to the tea. I let it, I put the tea bags in and uh, for 10 minutes and I set the timer for 10 because if you leave it in too long, it could get better. So then I put it in the refrigerator to chill for a few hours. I have two cups of ice cubes. This is going to get a little out of here. And then I had frozen some, I keep frozen banana in chunks in my freezer anyway, about a half of the medium. And again, depending on where you are on your journey, you may need a little bit more sweetener. So as I said, you want to taste this and adjust accordingly. I've got a little bit of uh, syrup in here. It's, um, I don't usually use agave, but the person who's going to have this really likes it. I've got the date syrup too. That's another option or putting a whole date in. If I'm blending it, I often put just the whole date. So I'm going to run this. <laughs> use my Vitamix so many times today. Okay. Going to make some noise. <laughs> There you have it. You can use other kinds of tea. You can use chai, peppermint, whatever you like. I really do like the bergamot, the Earl Grey, because I do like that bergamot. I love the floral, uh, the floral uh, fragrance and I just, I love the taste. So use whatever kind of tea you like that came up with just a little bit of prep time, but comes together super fast and it's really good for us too. So we're kind of out of time here. So I want to give it back to Olivia for questions. So Michelle, the first question is for you and it's about the Chipotle dressing. Um, someone asked if you can replace 
um, the cashews with something else if you have a nut allergy. I think a couple of people did mention tofu as an option, but I don't know if you've actually tried it a different way. Yeah, if you've tried it with tofu. I mean, because you might already be using tofu for your mayo or the other dressing, but I've used sunflower seeds. And if you're avoiding nuts altogether, you can use a white bean. So, okay. One of the creamier options. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so Jody, I know this is just a garnish, but someone asked uh, for the kebabs if there's a substitute for sesame seeds. Is there, um, they said they're allergic. Is there any other garnish you recommend for it? The only thing that come, is coming to mind right away would be like black cumin seeds, but that probably wouldn't give you the right flavor. So um, I don't know, Michelle, does anything wonderful come to your mind? I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank on that. I the other know. thing, would have, uh, well, you know, the other neat thing you could do is maybe take, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wondered about hemp hearts because I was looking for like the same kind of color. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes, yeah. that's brilliant. That would be absolutely brilliant because you're still getting that same punch of uh, calcium and protein and that extra little nutrition to it. And it would have the exact same visual. So that would, that would be lovely. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Great tip. Hemp hearts are, are great. I add them to so many things. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so someone was asking specifically about the flavor difference between soy sauce and coconut aminos. If you could maybe like briefly touch on what you would use soy sauce for versus coconut aminos. I have a gluten issue, so I don't use soy sauce for anything. Tamari would be the other thing you could use. It's a much stronger flavor. I just like the uh, coconut aminos. They've got a little sweeter. They're much less, uh, just a fraction of the sodium in there. And I just, I like the flavor profile better, but I don't have the soy sauce to be able to answer that. Maybe Joey, you could take that one. Uh, flavor wise, I would just see the difference is coconut aminos tends to be a little bit sweeter. So that would be the only, uh, it's just a savory, but it's, it has a little sweetness to it. That would be a little bit different. The fun thing about coconut aminos though is that it comes in so many neat flavors. You have the smoky ones and the teriyaki ones and the garlic ones. So there's a lot of neat variation with the coconut aminos that you wouldn't have with just a soy sauce. Yeah, so uh, Trader Joe's was out of my coconut aminos for so long. They're so much more economical. They're $2.99 a bottle and I've seen them at Whole Foods for $14. 99 and even the Bragg's version of the coconut aminos is a much thicker one. So when they were out, they uh, had this instead, which is a smoky one. So that's kind of nice too. But um, yeah, I, I just like them. And like I said, there's just a fraction of the sodium in there. And I do like that little bit of sweetness. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Highly recommend, um, you know, for cost to get your coconut aminos at Trader Joe's. Definitely, I know I, I generally stock up every time I'm there because they tend to run out. Um, okay, so Jody, the next one is for you. Someone was wondering for the pina colada pie filling, um, if they could maybe like replace it with coconut milk or coconut cream and like some agar agar to um, you know, bind everything or add something. I think they're just in general curious about maybe adding some of that or using that as, as a replacement for what you used, if you have any suggestions on that. Absolutely. I think that would be delicious. The only reason I didn't make that choice is because it doesn't work with my health goal, uh, but it certainly would make, uh, it would meet my flavor goal for sure. That would be delicious. That would be a wonderful option. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I forget who asked this question, but if you try that out, let us know how it works. I'm sure it would be great. Um, okay, it looks like the last question we have is for Michelle uh, for the latte. Someone's wondering if they could replace the dates with uh, Mission Fig, if you've ever tried that. I have never tried using uh, figs instead of uh, the dates, but you could give it a try. I mean, I've, I've made other things, like I've made mango paste and uh, apricot paste instead of date paste for different flavor profiles, but I haven't tried it with figs. Have you, Jody? I have tried making fig, I've made fig paste instead of date paste. Yeah. Uh, I love figs. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I think it would work beautifully. Of course, the flavor is just going to be a little bit different, but it's not going to be a bad difference. It's just going to be right. I know people like fig jam a lot too. So I think that that could work and yeah, give it a try. 
Absolutely. Yeah, give it a try again. Let us know how it tastes. I'm, I'm sure it would be delicious.